Welcome to the Greener Way podcast, a show about people, planet, and purpose, and how investors and corporate leaders push forward in a complex world. Ekaterina Bigos, thank you so much for joining us on The Greener Way. Would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more fully and, and tell us about your uh, your role at AXA IM? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so in my current role as a CIO for Core uh, Investment for Asia and Ex- Ex- Japan, I represent AXA Investment Manager Strategies and Investment Views across asset classes uh, with clients in Asia. Uh, and just for everybody's uh, knowledge, in June this year, we have launched AXA IM Investment Institute where clients uh, can access under one roof our macro views, asset class, sustainability, and future uh, trend insights. Uh, and uh, my international experience advising clients on a buy and sell side roles across equity and fixed income spans over 15 years with my res- recent seven years based in Asia. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're here today to talk a little bit more about the exciting um, the exciting world of green bonds, Ekaterina. So um, can you explain a little bit more about your particular role um, and, and you know, a little bit about the state of play for green bonds at the moment? Yes. And, and just I'll, I'll set this scene a little bit just uh, to uh, in regards to climate change. As we all know, the climate change is one of the most critical issues facing society. It brings damaging impacts for people, communities, uh, the natural world, as well as disrupting national economies. Uh, we've experienced twice more natural disasters over the past 20 years with top five risks in 2020 related to climate. Uh, the, the the global surface temperatures for June 2022 was the sixth highest in the 143 year record above the 20th century average. Uh, so limiting that warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius the world must reduce the annual carbon emissions by 55% by 2030 and reach a net zero by 2050. So very high standards, very high uh, benchmarks there. So undoubtedly, the environmental challenges pose the risk risks, uh, at the same time represent an unprecedented opportunity to act. Uh, and just to give additional context, about 1.2% of the global GDP is needed in the yearly green investments uh, to reach the global warming targets that I just mentioned. Uh, so this requires immediate direct actions from all of us uh, to change economies, shift policies and direct investor attentions uh, to uh, accelerate carbon transition plans for companies and for governments. And just the zooming in into green bonds, they certainly have emerged as a unique and more importantly, transparent and responsible investment opportunity uh, to help to help uh, tackle that climate change uh, by financing environmentally friendly projects. So green bond, uh, green bond proceeds are exclusively applied, uh, and this is a, certainly an AXA requirement to finance or refinance in part or in full new or existing eligible green projects. Uh, and just for the audience uh, benefit, I'll just expand and, and tell you which projects those are. Generally, they're classified as uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy, pollution prevention and control, natural resources and land management, uh, wastewater and water management, uh, uh, clean transportation and uh, uh, clean buildings and projects. Uh, and for the last two, I would say uh, they're most uh, probably visible uh, for the last couple of years, certainly with renewable energy and transport and buildings as top three areas uh, of development, uh, of deployment of proceeds globally. Mm. Uh, and certainly over the years, uh, corporates uh, more and more uh, are committed to issuing green bonds uh, with great awareness uh, and understanding about the impact that green bonds uh, can have. Uh, and increasingly, corporations are viewing sustainability as a central to, the, as a, as central to uh, their strategies, placing greater value on reputational or so, so-called halo effect of aligning capital with these environmental and social challenges. Uh, and uh, green bond issuance is anticipated to expand uh, as more projects are identified due to a growing demand of renewable energy, the growing demand for that clean drinking water and sanitation, uh, the rising concern around CO2 emissions that I just uh, talked about at the beginning, the rising awareness of uh, forest uh, conservation uh, and the growth of urban population across the world. So all of those elements will certainly bring uh, more projects and bring more uh, emphasis on, on green bonds over the coming years. Uh, so mm-hmm. if you're looking a little bit, uh, kind of looking backwards and look at development of this market, uh, so certainly uh, a decade of p- a powerful growth, if you might say, has brought these green bonds uh, into mainstream and has delivered a richer, and more varied universe for investors. Uh, and uh, to just give a, a little bit of a historical background, the first green bond uh, was issued in 2007 uh, by European Investment Bank. 
Uh, and 2015, the Paris uh, Conference for Climate Change, or COP21, uh, uh, set in motion the transition to low carbon economy, and it was a defining moment uh, for growth in this market. Uh, and just over this decade, uh, the green bond market has grown to become uh, just above one trillion. Uh, and just to make sure that the audience understands, we're excluding out of this universe uh, the CNY issuance, which is the China uh, Chinese local currency issuance. Uh, so that's sure. a, a one trillion except that part of the market. It attracted attention of investor engaged in the carbonization of assets with close to 600 issuers uh, and about 50-50 split between sovereign related and corporate issuers. And if you look at 10 years ago, as I said, the first bond was European Investment Bank, and that now has evolved to be 50-50 between governments and, and corporate issuers. Uh, bank has play, have played a, a key role and continue to do so. And increasingly, we see a substantial contribution uh, from many corporate um, sectors, such as real estate, telecoms, or, uh, autos, uh, chemicals, and consumer goods. Uh, so certainly a much more varied and diverse universe. Uh, and just uh, giving a little bit of background for uh, this year. Uh, so green bonds are certainly leading uh, in terms of the market share uh, and issuance in general. And uh, if you look at the broader uh, GSS bonds, which is uh, green sustainable social bonds, so the market mm. uh, registered about 26 billion uh, in August. Uh, total for the year was at around 244 uh, billion, which is about 18% uh, increase from 2021. And we had about mm. eight inaugural issuers, which again, it's an incredible statistic to consider that more and more uh, issuers are coming uh, coming to the to the market. Uh, credit mm. has uh, particularly dominated the green bond market, uh, accounting for 67% uh, of August issuance. Uh, and again, within credit, financials have paid, uh, played an important role, uh, followed by industrials, uh, broken by about 45% uh, versus 15, uh, respectively. Uh, in terms of currency, uh, certainly as expected, uh, and if you look at the overall market share, uh, euro accounted for 56% of the issuance and US dollar about uh, 16%. Uh, and we'd expect a little bit more going forward from the US dollar denominated issuance and particularly that we've seen uh, the US uh, putting in place the Inflation fi uh, fi Fighting Act, uh, which certainly will uh, provide uh, additional emphasis on onto this uh, onto this market. It seems it's it's putting all of that in perspective. It's been a tremendously um, vibrant market over a very short period of time, but it's nowhere near that. What was that figure you said at the beginning? Uh, One trillion dollars a year of financing needed between now and 2050 to um, help transition the global economy. Um, it feels like that statistic becomes very real when you're looking at things like um, the super monsoon that's currently slamming the Philippines, for example, right at harvest season, uh, that as vibrant as this market is, the demand is still so much more. Um, so how how do you look for these opportunities as an investment manager at XIM? Yes. And, uh, you know, you can't just talk about this market. You have to look at the supply, as you said, the supply side, uh, which is the corporations that increasingly and the governments looking at the issues that certainly facing the society with regards to climate change for this particular segment, uh, certainly we have, uh, you know, social and sustainable one that are, are, are part of the broader responsible investing uh, universe. In terms of the demand side, uh, and this is kind of where we come in, uh, you know, the, the coupled with doing good, and certainly we are all aiming to do good from that. That's only one part of us uh, doing good. Certainly there's other elements about responsible investing integration in the broader investment process. Uh, but this is just one particular asset class and how we're looking to uh, tackle this issue from from an investor perspective. Uh, the the well balanced and transparent universe of green bonds with compelling yield and attractive current valuation make uh, make green bonds certainly a meaningful long term portfolio allocation. And I'm going to break it down a little bit in, as to why we viewed uh, a, a, an important uh, not just doing good but also for an investor perspective. I think it's a compelling uh, compelling proposition. Uh, so mm. if I look, I zoom in a little bit into this asset allocation perspective. Uh, for many investors, green bond universe offers a balanced, balanced risk profile. And what I mean by that is half of the universe is made up of uh, corporate issuers, as I mentioned. And if you look at uh, the global um, uh, bond universe, which is, let's say, global aggregate is the benchmark representing that, uh, that uh, has about 25% uh, of that universe uh, is is uh, corporates, whereas the green bonds is about 50-50. So this means uh, the sustainable um, 
uh, or green bond universe uh, has certainly a high exposure to credit spreads, which in the long run, it offers benefits of better diversification away from sovereign, for sovereign debt and potential better expected returns in form of high yields. So an important element in terms of the overall kind of risk profile and, and return profile of this universe. Uh, and if you look at the performance uh, of this uh, asset class, uh, it outperformed since 2017, uh, with the exception of this year, uh, where the performance was impacted by historic uh, rise in rates uh, combined with mm. widening of credit spreads. Uh, and mm. this uh, underperformance was mainly due to the difference in interest rate, and as I mentioned earlier, and credit sensitivity between the two universes. So if you compare again the green bond global universe and the, the non-green or the classic uh, bond universe global, uh, certainly the composition is different. Uh, and while the actual difference in duration between the two universes is small, it's uh, around 12% of the conventional universe is, is exposed to Japanese bonds. Uh, so contribute about 1.3 year in duration. Uh, and as you all know, the, the rates in Japan have remained relatively stable since the beginning of the year compared with the green bond universe, which is mainly exposed to euro and US rates. So that composition difference certainly had an impact in performance of the asset class uh, from an investor perspective. But in the long term, as I said, uh, the well diversified and transparent universe is certainly a compelling asset allocation for a lot of the, the investors. Um, and one other reason, as I said, and again, this is purely, uh, if you will, <laughs> away from just doing good and, and the willingness for us to grow into this asset class, uh, the, the, certainly the, the possibility of returns of, this, uh, of green bonds, uh, it's another appeal. And uh, in addition to the elements that I discussed and the, the more balanced universe of green bonds, uh, mm. the yield, in terms of yield, the uh, um, Yield and spread for this year was selling the differential. It's at historical highs. So on yield level, uh, the green bond universe is about 40 percent, uh, 40 bips higher than that of the conventional universe. And the average spread uh, of uh, green universe versus the conventional universe uh, was around 70, boy, uh, 70 basis points uh, in in June, uh, which was the highest level, and it was about 66 basis points in July. Uh, so again, uh, if you might look at in terms of uh, mini version of spread coming back, uh, there's certainly uh, a compelling opportunity in this universe from uh, from a return perspective and, and going forward. Where do green bonds fit into portfolios at AXA IM Core Investments, Ekaterina? Um, is this, um, are, do you mainly put them into bespoke mandates where there's an express green um, thematic? Does this fit into a diversified portfolio where you're hoping to take advantage of the Paris alignment or the transparency or the use of proceeds? What's the strategy from an asset allocation perspective? Yeah, so so uh, they they have to be. Can I'll, I'll give it a little bit of insights in terms of how we look at responsible investing. So. So as I said, there's integration uh, of RI or responsible investing across our portfolios. Uh, and this is a, it's a broader across AXA IM. This is a, it's a big initiative and about 70% uh, of our AXA IM assets are ESG integrated, right? So this is just a, across portfolios. It's a consistent process of integrating uh, and of ESG integration. Uh, and what does it mean in terms of uh, outcomes for each portfolio manager is that uh, first, we screen the entire universe investable or the entire assets that we have on a platform uh, and the the um, the names that fall under 1.4 uh, um, ESG rating or lower, I get removed, I get are getting removed out of the broader universe or the investable, mm -hmm. the investable universe. The second mm -hmm. is the um, ESG score for each of our strategies regardless whatever is labeled or unlabeled, uh, the ESG score of that particular strategy has to be higher than that of the benchmark. So this mm -hmm. is, these are very much a set in stone across the entire AXA IM platform. And as I said, the, for 70% uh, of our assets are ESG integrated. And then when we look at impact, so and you would qualify the green bonds as a category of impact, uh, the Article 9 funds, this is a is a particular strategy that just focuses on green bonds uh, or investing and allocating assets into green bonds. Uh, so um, and, and then we have uh, so certainly away from the strategy, which is particularly focused on this asset class. We also will have in each of the or other strategies that are broad and ESG integrated will have opportunities where we can access and tap into that market. In Asia, particularly, we have a, a rates product uh, that is Article 8, uh, so it's ESG integrated and certainly looks at elements to incorporate and invest in green bonds. 
so it's again it's ESG integration across the platform, uh, but also dedicated strategies or impact strategies that allocate specifically to green bond. Excellent. And just to clarify for uh, some of our listeners that may be as may not be as familiar with the European classification under EU law. Um, Article 8 and Article 9 refer to the type of strategies, responsible investment strategy. So Article 8 is, as you say, an ESG integration approach, whereas Article 9 has that explicit alignment to either environmental or social impact. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, good. It's always good to be clear on our terminology when we're talking to uh, to our educated not audience here at the, at the Greener yeah. Way. So how the other the other word that's on everybody's lips this year is greenwashing, Ekaterina. Um, how does AXIM verify that the green bonds that you include uh, in your portfolios are true to label and the use of proceeds are being attributed um, in the way they were intended to avoid that uh, the, the dread slur of greenwashing? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, as much as we talked about the growth of, of green bonds uh, and we've seen it reach uh, past a trillion or past for the last decade or decade plus, uh, it, mm. it's uh, it, there's still no standard uh, for green bonds or what a mm-hmm. consensus on what the true green bond is. Uh, mm. So different standards uh, coexist across the world. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, and the development of market has been supported by uh, Capital Markets Association, uh, green bond principles and the Climate Bond Initiative. So uh, I'm sure the audience have heard about these two independent organizations that certainly has helped put a framework uh, that private initiatives uh, that provide issuers with advice on key elements for launching true green bonds and help uh, investors to evaluate the environmental impact of those investments. So uh, certainly those two private organizations have set the standards uh, to some degree, uh, whereas I think they still uh, an obligation from each of the asset manager to make sure that the, the standards uh, are rigorous. And at AXIM, we have developed our own standard, which is closely aligned to the uh, uh, Capital Market Association's uh, green bond principles. In addition to that, we have uh, an ESG, let's say, apply a, a, a quantitative screen, if you might say. So before we apply the principles, which I'm going to go in details uh, a little bit later is we apply an ESG screen. So again, uh, applying that uh, ESG integration or ESG screening across uh, the entire the entire universe before we start assessing uh, each of the uh, the green bonds. So we need to make sure. And the reason that we apply the ESG score uh, is that we need to make sure that uh, not only the we select the green bonds, but we also select green bonds from issuers. Uh, that abide to a certain ESG uh, principles, right? So I think that's incredibly mm-hmm. important. Uh, mm-hmm. So in terms of those uh, four principles, uh, which I mentioned are very much aligned with Capital Markets Association, there's four mm-hmm. pillars that we'll look at is issuer sustainability strategy. Uh, so a clear definition on the issuer environmental strategy and commitments. Uh, the project types, so transparency on projects, uh, project greenness and external certifications. Uh, and that's incredibly important. Again, assessment and third party or independent part, party assessment on those projects and its greenness. Uh, it's important when we look to uh, select the true green bonds. Uh, the management mm-hmm. of proceeds uh, and uh, we need to ensure that sufficient guarantees uh, need to be in place to segregate the pool of assets and to control the allocation of proceeds to eligible projects by, by the issuer. Uh, and mm-hmm. the last and not least is impact reporting uh, and the issuer ability to measure and report positive impact uh, and the environmental benefits uh, with an independent third party assessment. Uh, and you would see even in Australia, I mean, there is, uh, when we look at third parties, there is usually the, the big fours that uh, tend to uh, dominate, particularly in Australia, where uh, you would have a third party assessment or a, a consultant, as you might call, uh, giving a third party assessment mm-hmm. of that impact, impact reporting, uh, which mm-hmm. is, again, important in terms of bringing to light uh, that transparency that I've talked about, about the green bonds. And I'd say I, that's a key differentiator uh, in terms of uh, the deployment of proceeds and that transparency element. It's a key differentiator mm-hmm. to the conventional uh, to the conventional bonds. Uh, and I'll just give you a little bit of statistics. So. Uh, just to put a bit in perspective and, and numbers, because uh, we'll have numbers. <laughs> so the if you look at AXA, it's, uh, you know, if you look at the ESG standard exclusions uh, and the sectorial policies that we put in place with the principles and the, uh, and applying that uh, green bond framework, around 20 to 25 percent of the green bond broader universe is excluded. So, again, mm-hmm. putting those framework in place that I've talked about and access particular ones certainly narrows down the universe by, by about 25%. Uh, 
okay. with with that ESG um, exclusion, standard exclusion, and the sectorial policies only limiting to about two point one percent. So the first screen that I talked about, that uh, qualitative screen, uh, reduces the universe by about two percent. And then we, when we apply the principles, the green bond principles, and the selection of true green bonds, about twenty five percent of that universe, it's it's eliminated through that process. Interesting. Uh, so obviously, uh, there's a great, de- there's a degree of um, case by case assessment at Exa I am before you go ahead and make a commitment to to a bond that purports to be green. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, how do you view impact um, at at Exa I am when it comes to the green bond universe? Um, is this something that is additive to, but not central to the case, or is this something that you're really tying to the central analysis of an issuance uh, that's labeled green? That's right. So, and the, as you call it, the, the impact, and I, as you mentioned, the Article Nine, uh, by by requirement, all of those uh, strategies, regardless whatever it's AXA or any other uh, investment manager, has to uh, mm-hmm. report uh, or have that uh, impact reported or reflected in the fund documentation. Uh, and some of the the let's say calibrations, you might say, uh, for specifically exemplifying our green bond fund is that, and I'll give a few. Uh, references here is uh, that um, the carbon emissions uh, reduction uh, to the conventional issuance is about 86 Um, percent and then we have 298 tons of co2 emissions is avoided per uh, 1 million euro invested Uh, an Mm -hmm. equal of 66 cars get removed from the road per one euro uh, 1 million euro invested Uh, and another one is 287 megawatts of renewable energy per uh, 1 million uh, euro invested. Uh, so again, this is a specific quantifiable uh, impact that that mm. our particular bond fund has. And then just to sort of um, finish off this, this interview with a forward-looking um, prediction, um, Ekaterina, do you think that, uh, what's the future gestalt? Will green bonds continue to grow as an overall section of the credit universe or will standard bonds become more green over time and meet in the middle or is this a case where both could be at play absolutely i think it's probably more the latter is that both will be at play i mean they mm-hmm. fulfill one as i said it's an impact uh, it's a cause uh, that we all need to be uh, looking into uh, and the other is just more broad uh, general financing for corporations so uh, certainly, as I mentioned, the uh, the uh, realization of a lot of corporations uh, and understanding the impact they can have uh, on the universe, uh, it's uh, on the 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 universe and the society. Uh, I think it's mm. important to look at that uh, that growth. And I think certainly there's a lot more education and understanding of what that impact is. Uh, and I think there are a lot of corporations. If you look at uh, how they view sustainable investing and green bonds generally. Uh, you might say that there is uh, ability to potentially expand their investor universe. Uh, you know, some of the elements potentially related to cheaper financing, which has been referred as greenum, which can be the case in some issuances. But more importantly, a lot of corporations are viewing sustainability as a central to their strategies. I mentioned, uh, and certainly that halo effect of aligning capital with their environmental and social uh, challenges, it is incredibly beneficial for a lot of corporations. Uh, so it, it's it is expected that green bond issuance uh, will uh, will expand as more projects are identified, and this is one of the key elements: is that uh, the, the, those projects need to be identified first before the corporations can uh, issue those bonds. So that process in motion it's already been set in motion, and certainly as more of those projects get identified, we'll see a lot more uh, issuance. Uh, and from all sectors, uh, and as considering that the last 10 years and the first issuance was uh, from a government or a quasi-government institution, European Investment Bank, and now we are in a universe where a lot of corporations across the globe are issued with green bonds. It's certainly uh, uh, um, a sign that this will continue. Certainly the, uh, the direction of travel has been set uh, and certainly will, will continue. Uh, and as I said, for, for the general uh, bonds, I think it's it's just a general financing, but uh, this this has a different... It has a different momentum. I certainly comes from a law base than, than general financing reforms. So. Wonderful. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Ekaterina Bigos, CIO at AXA IM Core Investments. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Greener Way podcast. If you like today's show, remember to rate and review us on your podcast platform and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss an episode. Any feedback? Contact us on podcast at fssustainability.com.au. 
I'm Rachel Allen Backus. The Greenaway Podcast is a product of FS Sustainability, a show about people, the planet, and investing in our collective future. All information in this podcast is for education and entertainment purposes only. The Greener Way podcast gives listeners access to information and educational content provided by discussing numerous financial sustainable options and our featured guests. It is not intended as a substitute for professional, legal, or tax advice. The hosts of The Greener Way are not financial professionals and are not aware of your personal financial circumstances. FS Sustainability operates under an Australian Financial Service License and the exemption made available under the Corporations Act 2001 in respect to any information or advice given. Before making any financial decisions, you should read the product disclosure statement and if necessary, consult a licensed financial professional. For more information, head to the disclaimer page on the FS Sustainability website, fssustainability.com.au.